welcome to the second lecture. In the first lecture, we met attempt to analyze the definition and other conceptual issues with respect to microeconomics. So I believe you have gone through the slides as well as the lecture notes that I uploaded in the, um, in, the upline, in, in the online system. You familiarize yourself with uh, all those stuff that we have treated. So that will help us in understanding the preceding class. So in, this, in today's lecture, we are going to treat demand and the supply. And I believe they are not a new concept to you. It's something that you have already known, but we are going to give an in-depth analysis on the forces that determine supply and demand and how the two concepts comes to equilibrium in the market. Why do we need the theory of demand and supply? This arises from the fact that um, we need theories and predictions in economic, for economic analysis. With theories, one can be able to make a predictions about the consequences of certain policies and what alternative policies that can be pursued in order to enhance the productivity of any nation. So the mental tool that we use in making such predictions is theory. When you theorize, then you should be able to make a predictions. So theory is very useful in making an accurate predictions. And if you don't have a theory, there is no way in which you can make a very accurate and reliable predictions about a given phenomenon. We need a theory in price in economics in order to explain the decision embarked upon by different economic agents to see how demand is affected by price, how supply of goods and services is also affected by price. So having the knowledge of predictions with the aid of theories, we can be able to determine the price, equilibrium price and the equilibrium quantity. Those were the stages at which the two computing forces comes into equilibrium. And without theories, such kind of things, analysis can never be happen without any hinges. So in the, th in the theory of demand and supply, we do assume that um, um, we are operating in a competitive market conditions. You know, in a competitive market competition conditions whereby we have many buyers and sellers and uh, the sellers doesn't have any influence on the prices of goods and services, rather they are market takers, I mean they are price takers. Um, they don't, they only control very small fraction of the market share. So there is no way in which a, a seller of good A can influence the prices of goods he produces because the market is characterized by a large number of buyers and a large number of sellers and there is no possibility of making a preferential treatment in regard to which of the buyer that I'm going to patronize or which of the seller, uh, uh, for the seller, which of the buyer is he going to and sell his product to. Rather, the goods and services are identical to the extent that it is not possible to distinguish between goods produced by Mr. A with the goods produced by Mr. B. So the result is a negligible impact on the market price for each particular seller. So we're going to start with uh, demand. When we say demand, we're referring to a quantity of goods and services that a consumer is willing to buy at a particular time and at a particular point in, at, at a particular market price. So demand is a full description of how quantity changes with respect to changing, changes in prices. So if price changes, what happens to quantity of goods and services that consumer is willing to be able to buy at a point in time? It is essential to distinguish between wants and demand. You say you want a lot of things rising from you want a house, you want a big car, you want to go to many places, you want to go to Dubai for your tourism, for your shopping, maybe you, go to, you want to go to the US, you want a lot of things, you want are insatiable. In fact, there is no way in which if you give me whole 24 hours a day to list every item that I want in time. While 
a want that is that a want that is backed by the income then it's called demand because it is not everything that you want that you have money to make such purchases so what you want and if you have income that is sufficient enough to buy all those that you want given by a particular price at a particular point in time then want is transformed into what demand so this is a graphical illustrations which we call demand schedule that we try to itemize the goods and services that we demand at a point in time given by particular prices so demand schedule is a cup that establish the relationship between demand at a particular point in time with its with a particular price and demand schedule try to illustrate the law of demand you can see the the catering demand curve if the price of goods and services that she demanded is three dollar then she won't be able to consume any demand is zero then if the price reduced to two dollar then she will be able i mean 2.5 should be able to consume quantity to quantity of ice cream corn then further in decrease in price from one to 1.5 then her quantity demanded increases and if the price is reduced to 50 cents then she will be able to consume large number of ice cream about 10 corn of ice cream so the curve reflected negative relationship between the price and the quantity demanded so when you draw the line you see that uh, when the price reduces the quantity demanded decreases when the price decreases the quantity demanded increases so how can we how do we plot market demand curve when some different individuals demand curve as let's say Catherine's demand with Nicholas demand and if you have any other individual demand curve when you sum them all together you have what is called market demand curve then law of demand what the law of demand states it stated that the higher the price the lower the quantity demanded and vice versa when the price of goods and services goes up all things remain constant then demand for goods and services should reduce because individual has some constraints, budget constraint that he will not be able to purchase all the goods and services that he needs at the point in time given by the rising prices. So, demand, law of demand tried to give up some, give us some insight to the limitations that prices impose on the quantity of goods and services that individual uh, is constrained to buy given by uh, rising prices of goods, uh, given by his level of income in explaining the concept of law of demand we make sure that and all factors that influence demand are held constant take for instance even if prices of goods and services increase if your income level increases then consumer will be able to maintain the given consumption habit or the given quantity that he consumes before the prices rises that income effect will cushion out the increase in prices and so the consumption of quantity different bundles of goods and services will remain unchanged so it is important that the price warden law of demand that these factors that ex that influences the goods and services demanded should be held what's constant such items include price of the ice cream as a case of the catherine the price of related goods and services or goods that are somehow substitute with the ice cream look think, think of yogurt then consumers income that's Catherine's income then the tests for instance during winter season we have less test for ice cream because it's cold then consumers expectation about the future prices and the incomes if you expect your income will increases then that will affect the quantity of goods and services you consumes and so also if there is any expectations that prices of goods and services in future will increase then consumption of more goods and services is likely to have to happen now in anticipating that in future that consumer may not be able to maintain a given consumption habits then the number of buyers the higher the number of buyers the more goods and services consumes 
then the lower the number of buyers, the lower the quantity demanded of goods and services. So low demand tried to reflect the invariability or the inverse relationship between the price provided that all the factors itemized above remain constant because once they change then the whole theory may likely to also be violated. Then why it might demand increases? Demand do increases because of maybe increase in all the factors that we itemize that that influences uh, quantity demanded apart from the price of particular goods. Take for instance here we have a quantity a situation A and the quantity a situation B. A situation A when the price is zero, top unit is consumed, while in situation B, 20 units is consumed. When the price increases, situation A 10 units and situation B 16 units and it goes on, you can see that the same unit increase in price, but the quantity, the magnitude of the changes in quantity is not the same. So then what is a possible reason behind this? Is it the price or is it the consumer preferences? These divergences in the magnitude of the quantity demanded is attributed to all factors that influence demand other than prices other than price of a com commodity. This can be explained by shifts in demand curve rather than and change in quantity demanded. Shift in demand curve, you see, are caused by changes in consumers' income, prices of related goods, tests, expectations, says about future prices, number of buyers, and so on and so forth. So this is a graphical illustration of shift in demand curve. Assuming that uh, uh, there is change in tests, consumer is now more inclined to consume more ice cream because maybe he's expecting that next month is going to be a freezing because winter period is approaching, that he consume more of ice cream so that during winter he will reduce consumptions of ice cream. So that increase in test that marks by consumptions of more ice cream will reflect to outward shift of demand cup as shown by the black line, which is D2. Then during winter, if the consumption is decreased, then the demand curve would move inwards. You can see movement from the red, I mean from the green line to dark inwards black line. It marks the decrease in demand curve, which is demand, uh, demand curve theory. Then for normal goods, increase in demand, Increase income, I mean, increase the income of normal goods will mark the increase in demand for goods and services consumed. While if the good is inferior, that consumers are demanding such goods because they don't have any other alternatives, increase in their income will lead to reduction in demand of inferior goods. Then, prices of related goods and services, take a look of goods that are substitutes like Pepsi Cola and Coca Cola. Increase in price of Pepsi Cola will lead to increase in quantity in Coca Cola because they are substitutes. Consumer can substitute one for another. He will, go, he will abandon the high price commodity in favor of lower price commodity. Then, if the goods and services are complements, they are jointly consumed. Reduction in the price of one commodity will lead to increase in consumption of the other complementing goods. Think of car and fuel. If the price of automobile reduces, then consumption of fuel will also increase. Gasoline will also increase because they are complement. They complement one another. So a lot of demand try to explain this substitution. Can, yep. Can you please look at camera one? Oh. You are not looking at Oh, I'm looking at two now. No, I, I told you, uh, even if the light is mm -hmm. changing, just look at this. Okay, okay. Tamam. Can you start from the beginning, uh, the, the, the last, the, the previous okay, okay. slide? Yeah, this, this one? Okay. J just stay looking at this. 
and try to be still because I think you are making your leg uh, something is shaking you. So okay. try to be still. Tamam. Just look at this, okay? Okay. So just when I tell you to start, okay? Tamam. Three, two, start. Okay. Low of demand try to explain the two types of uh, effects that consumer um, faces whenever he whenever there is changes in prices or any factor that uh, affects the consumption of goods and services um, one of such things is substitution effects if the price of goods and services increases then consumer will substitute the expensive goods and services for a cheaper ones then the income effect decrease in consumptions of um, decrease in consumption of goods and services whose price uh, decreases will lead to consumer to have more income at his pocket so the law of demand tried to explain these two types of effects uh, for instance when the price of goods and services decrease consumer substitutes that goods instead of consuming other computed commodities for instance there were some commodities clothes coke books, movies, and Pepsi. So when the price of Coke decreases, well, consumer will have what incentive to make other substitution. Consumer will decrease consumption of Pepsi. Then instead, the consumption of all the, the, co the Coke will also will be increased because they are su substituting goods and services. Then for the income effects, it can be illustrated with the aid of, with the aid of um, this table. Take a look at situation A, where the price of an apple is $1, price of an orange is $2, then the income, total income of the consumer is $10. So if income rises, situation A becomes situation B. Then rises income, situation A becomes like, then one dollar two dollar then the income double he can increase consumption of both commodities because his income is double then if the price fall then situation a becomes situation c at the same level of income then consumer can also double the consumptions of apple and orange so you can see that fall in price will lead to double in consumption of the commodities while increase in income also lead to the same effect on the consumer which is doubling the consumption of what different commodities so which one is better between fault in price or doubling income it's an issue that uh, cannot be explained within the concept of economics is 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 all about the preferences of the consumer because they all have the same impact when the when the prices changes a reduction in price or income uh, increases the impact will be the same consumption of all goods and services can be increases the next in turn is supply we have studied demand we have seen the factors that influence demand we have seen how demand curve changes as a result of um, influence of all the factors that uh, affect demand other than prices and we have seen that uh, it is only if the price changes that the quantity demanded can move up and down depending on the direction of the price. If it is increased in price, then quantity demanded can, decre then can decrease. And in, in, on the other hand, if the prices um, decrease, the quantity demanded increases as um, uh, proposed by the law of demand. The next in turn, we are going to see, we are going to study the behavior, behavior of firms with regard to what induced them to supply goods and services in the markets which is quantity supply. Quantity supply is what is the amount of goods and services the firm is willing to supply in the market at a point in time at a particular price. Supply try to describe how goods and services supply respond to price changes. You know, firms, they're profit oriented. They do supply goods and services if their prices is very attractive at the price in which there is no any possibility for them to make profits, they may not like to supply goods and services. Instead, they keep it in their inventory. It is only price is high enough to guarantee them to make profits. 
then that can induce firm to supply goods and services. Supply schedule is a table that illustrates different quantities of goods and services supply at a particular price. So at a lower price, firms may not be willing to supply because they may likely to incur loss. Production involves cost. Firms must organize all the productive factors, the label, the land, the capital, and the entrepreneur combined all together, pay them their respective rewards before productivity can, and before they can produce goods and services. So you can see that if the price is 50 cents, then nothing is supplied to the market. Supply is zero because of supply is insufficient to induce firm to supply goods and services. Then if the supply, if the price increases from 50 cents to one dollar, only one unit of commodity is supplied. Then as the price go up, then more goods and services were supplied. So this shows that there is a positive relationship between quantity of goods and services supplies and the price. As the price go up, then the quantity of goods and services supplies in the market increases. So supply, I mean the price is, is, is the paramount factor that influences a quantity of goods and services to supply because you know supply, uh, firms, they always look at the, the possibility of making profit in deciding whether goods and services should be produced or should be supplied in the market. Then market supply cup is the summations of different firms' goods and services they supply to the market. When all the goods and services supplied by firm A, firm B, firm C, D, E were added up all together, we have what is called market supply cup or market supply schedules. For instance, here we limited our examples on two individuals, Ben and Jerry. Jerry at zero price supply nothing, Jerry supply nothing, and the market price is zero. At 0 0.5, they all supply nothing, and the market price is zero. And as the price go up, the quantity of supply increases. Ben responded to supply one unit of goods and services at $1 price, while Jerry didn't supply. You can see it's very funny, because different firms, they have different cost of production. So when the price go up, it is only at 1.5 that Jerry think it is profitable enough for him to supply goods and services. So the prices keep increasing as quantity, uh, as the I mean, uh, uh, as the price increases, then supply curve keep increasing, and that's the summations of the Jerry's and the Ben's supply curve give us what we call market supply curve. So what market supply curve try to tell us? It try to choose that what goods and services that different firms supply at a prevailing market price. And this is supply curve for Bain and supply curve for Jerry. When the two cups were, were matched, it gives us the market supply cup that reflects the different quantity and services supply at the point in time. So from the, su from the supply schedule, we can come up with low of supply. We have seen that as quantity, as the, as the price increases, quantity supply increases. So it reflected the law of supply. We state that quantity of goods and services rises when, when the price rises, as long as all factors that influence supply remain constant. So what caused price to shift outwards or inwards? What we call changes in price. When factors that influences price or that, I mean, that influence quantity supply or that and prices changes. For instance, if a uh, cost of production, price of all that related goods and services that firm can produce within the same production cost or pr within pr the same production technologies changes, then supply curve can shift out outwards or inwards. Movement to the right um, reflected to um, increase in supply curve while movement to the left is illustrating decrease in supply curve. So these are the factors that causes shift in supply curve. Input price, 
if the price of factors of production that were combined to produce goods and services changes, then supply curve will change. If maybe the price of labor, capital, entrepreneur decreases, then supply curve may likely to increase because um, firm can be able to hire more productive factors in order to increase its productivity. Then technology, advancement in technology will lead to increase in supply curve as a result of technological advancement within a given quantity of productive resources more goods and services can be produced number of sailors this in short run if the number of sailors increases the more good more goods and services can be increases this combination of factors that marks the shifts in supply curve then haven't us studied demand and supply separately then what are the forces that can bring demand and supply into equality or into intersection with each other. This is what we call a equilibrium price and equilibrium quantity. We have seen that demand is an increasing function is a decreasing function of what price. If prices decreases, then quantity demanded increases. Although and inversely if the price increases, quantity demanded decreases. While Supply is an increasing function of, uh, of price. If price of goods and services increase, then quantity of supply increases. So we can see that price is a uniting factor that can bring into that can bring demand and supply into equilibrium. And remember, from the first slide, we give some assumption that we are operating within free market economy without any interference of other forces, let's say government, to induce any of the economic agents to make decisions as we respect to goods and services that will be buy or be supplied in the market. So here is a demand schedule that we put together, this demand schedule and the supply schedule. You can see that from the demand schedule it reflected the, um, the market law of demand at price is high, the quantity demanded uh, is low, and when the price is low, then quantity demanded or market demand increases. Then at $2, the, quantity, the market demand is $7, then corresponding supply schedule cup, it shows supply is an increasing function of price. When price dec increases, quantity supply and increases. At zero price, no any single supplier is willing to supply goods and services to the market. And it is only if supply, if, if the price is $2, then seven units uh, commodities can be supplied. And at this price, quantity supply is also $7. So it brings the intersection or the equality between demand schedule and supply schedule. This is what we call equilibrium quantity and the price is called equilibrium price. So and this can be presented in a diagram, a point of intersection between quantity demanded and quantity supply given by price is what is called equilibrium supply and equilibrium demand. Production or supply, any price higher than this equality will bring this equilibrium in the market. If the price is high, it will create excess supply over demand. And if the price is low, it will create excess demand over supply. Then how can we justify the assumptions of equilibrium? It's very easy by looking at what is the price after the equilibrium. So if after the equilibrium, any increase in price, let's say $2.5, then supply will be greater than demand because supply is an increasing function of price and on the other hand if the price is much lower than than quantity demanded then that we, we are going to face with what um, excess supply over i mean excess demand over supply so when market is not in equilibrium we can have a surplus surplus can occur when the prices of goods and services is greater than the quantity demanded then surplus will likely to occur in the market. And surplus is reflected in this. When the price is much lower than the equilibrium, you can see we have what shortages. 
and these are the things that must be avoided. So if we have either sh shortages or excesses, then some economic problem may likely to occur. You know, in economics, try to make sure that there is equality of demand and supply. If supply is higher than demand, definitely prices of goods and services is higher than equilibrium. And that will show the possibility of what's inflation in the economy. And on the other hand, if demand is higher than supply, then there will be a problem also in the economy because more goods and services will consume. And at a lower price, firms have very little incentives to produce goods and services. And that will br bring the danger of unemployment in the economy. So for economy to achieve a desirable, desired growth rate given by full employment of resources, it is expected that goods and services should also should only be produced at the point of intersections between demand and supply. Well, this is the end of uh, today's lecture. Hopefully next week we are going to treat consumer and to see the forces that are behind and consumer behavior. We are going to treat indifference curve, um, budget constraints, and so on and so forth. Then after that, we are going to see how producers engage in their productivity by studying theory of production, theory of firms. This will give us a clear picture on how each of the individual economic agents behaves. So until then, see you next week for another lecture. Thank you very much. Okay.